Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? Doing good. Happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. We've got Bearland Aaron. Bearland, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good this week. Thanks for having me. Great. Great. We've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Mark? <laughs> great, great. Good to see you. And of course, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you doing? Good. Happy to be on the show again. Great, great. And of course, you know him. You love him. The Land Geek, uh, Land Geek, Flight, Land Geek Flight School Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com, and most importantly, if not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Today's episode is sponsored by LOTS. So if you don't know what LOTS stands for, it means looking over Tate's shoulder. We're really excited about this new segment that is coming to a iPhone or Android phone or, you know, screen. It's going to be a, a series. Uh, Tate, do you want to describe what LOTS is? Yeah, absolutely. So LOTS is, uh, it's basically the opportunity to sit on my shoulder or be a fly on the wall as I walk you through certain aspects of the business in my day-to-day -day life. So we might cover anything from a deal review to opening the mail to meeting with an intake manager you get to see how I handle situations, what the numbers are for this week, and just kind of get a real life view of what my land business looks like, how it's running, and uh, uh, hopefully you can learn from it. So it's, it's a fun concept. I think there's a lot to be learned, but um, you know, it's, uh, it'll be coming, like Mark said, to a, to a phone near you. I think we'll be ready, Mark, in about five or six days. So by the time this comes out, it should be available. Wow. Wow. If you want to learn how to get it for free, just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. It is included with our new flight school. So that's a little bonus. So learn about uh, flight school and flight school live. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. All right. So this week's topic is a really interesting one. Uh, Mimi, do you want to kind of walk us through it? Well, I'm starting to feel some pain points in my business and I know I need to automate or delegate. And so things like I need to stop using a free version of my CRM and start paying for one that can handle more templates. I need to find a way to collect temp, uh, payments on my website. I need to increase my mailings. Um, I probably need to pay for another marketing platform. So I have all these outflows I have to decide if I'm going to spend the money and it's painful I've been go I've been doing okay without them and so I'm having a hard time uh making the plunge and spending more much money more money and I guess I know in the it should be a short-term pain right because it'll be a better long-term gain but I'm having a hard time jumping off the cliff I guess yeah no this is an entrepreneurial dilemma um absolutely so I think it's really worth sort of unpacking and, um, and kind of looking at it from a, some different angles. Uh, Bearline, Aaron, what are your thoughts? There are a lot of places that um, you can experience this. And of course, at all levels of the business, um, you know, there becomes that point at which, you know, maybe you're using Google Voice and it starts to become cumbersome once you, uh, you know, start to get some volume, you always have to press one, you know, it may, may not sound as professional on the customer side of the call, that sort of thing. Um, so the, you, you need to make that decision. Is it time for me to switch to, you know, like one of the paid services? Um, that's just a, an example of it. And it's actually something I'm working on right now. Um, probably probably used Google voice for as long as I, you know, as much as I could get out of it, you know? So, um, you know, but there's a cost there 
And is that particular service going to increase my revenue? Um, or is it a service that is going to um, increase the perception of my business in a way that's meaningful to me, um, even if it doesn't increase revenue. So those are kind of two things you can look at is like, you know, as you reach certain uh, growing pains areas, are you, are you going to receive a financial benefit from this? Or is it simply, is your customer going to receive a benefit um, that has an intrinsic value, that sort of thing. So there's two different two different kind of things that I look at when, uh, when I'm looking at those things. Um, and it is a tough decision because, hey, you're going to be spending more money. And in the short term, at least, um, your balance sheet might show that, you know, you went the wrong way. But, um, you know, sometimes you can do some calculations. Sometimes you just have to try things because nothing's permanent. You can always reverse that decision if it doesn't work out like you like. So, um, you know, the growing pains are always a good thing, even when they don't feel like it. So at all levels of the business, we all experience it. But, um, you know, you can look at it from as many ways as possible and make the best informed decision for your particular business. I like it. I like it. Eric Peterson, how would you help Mimi with her growing pains? So, I mean, I always enjoy, well, I don't know about enjoy, but like, it's easy for me to make a decision to, uh, you know, say add a subscription or increase a subscription level when I know it's going to affect productivity. In other words, it's going to make a process easier, or maybe it's going to allow me to automate something that I couldn't otherwise, et cetera. So in those scenarios, it's, it's almost like a no brainer for me. I mean, obviously there's dollar value associated with it, but, but oftentimes, you know, I'll move past that pretty quickly. Um, but I think the marketing side of the business is a little bit different because you don't necessarily see that kind of reward in, in terms of freeing up your time, depending on what you're doing, right? If you're hiring a VA, of course, that might free up some time, but if you're maybe purchasing some other subscription or service, um, you know, that's, that's an effect really, as Aaron was describing, more for your customer. And you may not see a result right away. But um, sometimes, you know, I, I've spent money to, to test different services in kind of the marketing field as well. And, um, you know, you, you do kind of evaluate it for a while and determine you know, do I want to spend this extra $50 or $80 a month or whatever it is and, you know, kind of track the results over time. Um, but I think, you know, it's, it, it's a tough thing always, right? Because if, if you're paying yourself from your business or, you know, it's your livelihood um, or you, you just want to be able to buy more land and you're spending this money elsewhere, but you've got to kind of balance that out and say, well, you know, is the reward going to help me have more money to spend on land or to pay myself or whatever it may be. Okay. All right. I like it. Big Papa, Tate Litchfield, how do you think about it? Uh, you know, I, I kind of agree with what um, everybody said up to this point. It's, it's hard to commit to spending more money. I mean, especially when you could use that money immediately to maybe generate an extra sale. But I'm a big believer in growth. And I think you always need to be working or striving to hit that next milestone. And you'll get to a point in this business where you hit a glass ceiling and you can't grow anymore without bringing on more expenses. It's just inevitable. And it takes a lot of guts and a lot of courage and a lot of, you know, evaluation to make the decision to pay the extra money for these services that make our life easier. I remember years ago, uh, Mark, you actually told me if it makes your life e easier, then it's worth the money. And that kind of stood out to me. If it helps me become more productive or efficient, then yes, hire the intake manager, pay for the extra marketing platform, send out more offers, do whatever you need to, to increase your quality of life because if your quality of life is good, then your business will be good. 
No, a- absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Scott Todd, what's your I, thoughts on this? I mean, there's a lot of good advice on here and you know, it's hard, it's hard to argue with any of it. In fact, you can't, but I would just say this is the way that I've always seen, especially outsourced labor. I'm not going to talk about softwares because, well, I mean, you're going to ultimately have to decide what's the right software platforms for you. And you mentioned marketing platform. I hope that you're including Landmoto in that because of course, you know, it's, it's a community effort. But that said, here's the deal. Whenever I think about adding people to the equation, first, I always think about adding people over outsourcing. So I or automation, I'm sorry. So I'd rather outsource over automate first because I can put someone in place now. Like I can have someone tomorrow doing work for me. Whereas automation always takes up to weeks to kind of get perfected. So people first and then automation. Second consideration is the way that I look at it is the people that are working for me, well, they're not really working for me unless I have the deal flow there to support them. Okay. So I'm not just going to go hire an employee for 40 hours a week and say, well, I don't know if I have work or not. I'm not going to try to fill their schedule with 40 hours. They're going to have a specific task. And what's going to happen is that workload is going to be paid for by the deal flow. Think about it. Like, you know, due diligence, my due diligence team. Well, they don't work unless I have property for them to do due diligence on. And then over a long period of time, I've determined that it's about a $16 per property investment. So look, I'm spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on a property. What's another $16? Hmm. Closing and and having an intake manager. That intake manager can probably do one, you know, one transaction an hour, basically on, on the, on the closing side with all of the miscellaneous follow-ups, et cetera. If I pay them, I mean, $18 an hour or $20 an hour, that's 18 or 20 again on the property. So, you know, they're not necessarily working unless I have properties that I'm buying. Now, the, the downside of that is that you could come across properties that go through due diligence or go through the intake manager and then you decide not to buy them for whatever reason or the person freezes and doesn't do it. So if that's your concern, maybe there's ways that you can negotiate instead of an hourly rate, a per unit rate. Um, and that, that might help you to keep your cost down. But the last thing to consider, and Tate kind of mentioned this, is whatever, whatever volume you have today you're, you're going to be limited to that volume. And if you want to scale, well, then you can't scale. You can't, you can't scale by cutting expenses, right? You know, that's the thing is I've seen businesses where they, they try to grow, but at the same time, they try to cut their expenses and you can't, you cannot grow while cutting expenses. The two do not go hand in hand. So the thing I would challenge you with Mimi is this, sit down, write out what that goal is. What is your big, massive goal? The big, hairy, audacious goal. What is that thing? And then when you look at it, you'll be like, man, I'm about, my goal is to make a million dollars a year. Perfect. Well, you're not going to make a million dollars a year by not paying anybody. Okay. You're going to have to pay people. And then when you look at it from the different perspective, the larger goal you realize, well, man, for me to get to a million, I'm going to have to spend this amount of money. It becomes peanuts. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's also really interesting to see Mimi, um, what, what is your effective hourly rate? So we kind of like want to approach it just by like a Spock logic. Um, I can't tell you how many times when I, when I first started and I would have to go through this emotional, you know, roller coaster ride with myself because I fell in love with like my own bank account. I checked the bank every day and I just wanted to see it keep going up and up. Right. And then there'd be like this, yeah. like this, this emotional ping of, Oh, wait a second. Yeah. Um, it's okay to buy land, but you know, to invest in that software, to invest in upgrading my computer and, or, or, you know, um, you know, my first VA, like, I'm like, well, you know, I could keep that money. Right. And it, it wasn't until, um, I went and, and really, you know, I had a mentor who just said, you know, just logically looked at it. He's like, you're just, you know, you're applying an, an emotional issue to a logical issue. You'll always lose. And, um, and that's when I was kind of got to that next level where 
I started delegating first um, and then outsourcing and then automating just like, you know, Scott said. And that way, that was the only way I got to the next level. Otherwise I was just kind of stuck and, and kind of sucking the, the joy out of my own business in a way. Yeah. So yeah. like I'll see the new, the new, the higher, I reach a new high in my bank account and I'll print screen it because I'm so excited. Right. But then I don't want to spend the money and I have all these pain points because I can't move faster. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey, Mark, Mark I, I just want to say something like I, every month, there's not a month that goes by where I, <laughs> where I don't look at how much money I pay out to my sales team and like do a double take. Like literally the money that like, there's so many months, the money that I give them that I pay them is well beyond the money that I took out of my business and into my bank account. Sometimes I'm wondering like, are they making more money than me? And it's just because of the way I do my accounting. I just take a set, set salary out, right? They're not because they're driving me forward. And I can tell you that when you have a good team, that team pays for itself. If that team or that software is not paying for itself, you should get rid of it and move on. But if they're good, they will pay for themselves and they should pay for them with a 10 X multiplier. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I had a, an argument with a guy the other day about um, what he was paying you know, for somebody in his business and what I was paying for someone in my business and I was paying double. And he's like, Mark, you, you could, you know, you're, you're way overpaying. I'm like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, I want to overpay because if you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. Right. And this way I don't have to deal with turnover. I, it, I'd actually, I want it to be at the point where like they would never want to leave. Right. Because they're never going to get a better situation than this. And then on the opposite side of the coin is that they're going to feel a, an ownership aspect to the business as well to want to see it grow because they don't want to disappoint someone that's, you know, compensating them so well. So, you know, it's, it's a sort of a different, uh, yeah, monkeys do like bananas. I know. Um, elephants you pay, or whatever. Anyways. <laughs> You don't want to pay peanuts. So, you know, so it is, it is, you know, you get to a point and Mimi, I, I've gotten to this point now where you hate cash, right? The cash in your bank is terrible because it's earning nothing. So every time you can reinvest, that is going to be a better return on capital than just kind of sitting in the bank. Now the issue, is you, you can make the argument, well, that capital I'm going to buy more land with. And I would make a counter argument and say, that's great, but why are you using your own money? Use someone else's money then, because that's going to fuel your growth as well. And I don't know, does that help? Definitely, it does. We're spending a lot of money this afternoon, it sounds like. And, and like Marilyn Aaron said, if it doesn't work out, if, it do, if you don't get a return on it, you can reverse it, right? Um, you know, Eric Peterson just signed up for a second account in geek pay his third account in geek pay right so i'm sure there's like a little sting in his heart to do that but look how much time he's saving automating you know collecting that money so it was probably a simple decision it was very easy yeah yeah so even even as as much as you tortured eric last year he still likes you i don't get it no, I, I, you know, Scott, I personally apologize to his mom. I think a lot of it was just the repair. You got to look in these relationships. You got to put in the time. <laughs> you know. okay. okay. Yeah. You got to harass him to like, to where his mom gets involved. And then you got to <laughs> apologize. Like you, you woke the mama bear. You know, but we won't yeah. go on the Mark apology tour again. Oh. I, I remained, no, I, but, I, but I took the time and I went on the apology tour and, and I think it's paid off dividends. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Okay. I'm just a better person. Oh, okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah. And it's less awkward because there's always that point in time where like you're at boot camp with Eric and I, you know, I always kind of think like, is he just going to sucker punch me at some point? 
<laughs> and like, it just had like on his knuckles, Jot Not Pro spelled out. <laughs> like it could happen. I mean, no. as listen, as much, <laughs> as much publicity as we have given Jot Not Pro, right? Like, Jot not, I, I mean, like, I don't even really even remember what they do anymore. Oh, it's a scanner app. And look, it's a five star, 4.9 rated, five, 4.9 rated app for Pete's sake. Scott, this is not about Jot Not Pro. I think this, <laughs> you know what this I is about. This have, is about I, when it was early on and it was Team Scott or Team Mark, and we know which team he went to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He chose that's the better team. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> hey, that's it. Jod Not Pro, I think they owe us because they've got like 13,000 reviews. It has nothing to do, I'm sure, with the quality of their app. I think it has to do with all the pub publicity that we've given them, that you've given them, and Eric have given them. I mean, maybe you guys are on the tape sure. for that. I don't know. We might need an ethics investigation. It, it, yeah, I don't know. You know. The, the Molar Jot Not Pro investigation is coming. <laughs> be, For could sure. Be the greatest thing ever. Yeah. So, um, Mimi, was this helpful? Yes, very much so. Thank you. Give me the nice. little push I need. So, what, what was your biggest takeaway, though? Um, well, I usually hire first before I go with the software. So, that was useful. And uh, 10x, right? that the person ought to pay for themselves by 10 times. Um, both of those were helpful. Yeah, I thought it, those are, yeah, I guess those are, are it. And that just, if it makes my life easier, then I ought to do it. Yeah, there you go. You can always make more money, Mimi, but you can't get more time, which is really the, you know, the fundamental reason to do this business really, right? Um, because we got it 90% automated and it's just, it's passive income without headaches, no renters, no rehabs, no renovations, no rodents. And that kind of segues into our tip of the week. Mimi, what's our tip of the week? Okay. I put it in the chat. Now I just need to press. So there we go. So last week I gave a Colorado hint. So this week I, I'm giving a hint for those of us that have property near water. So it's the FEMA flood zone GIS map. So um, if you're doing di due diligence or you know your due diligence team is doing due diligence on a particular property, the map isn't as sharp as some of the other GIS services, but you can definitely put the address in there without a house number, of course, you know, and then see where the flood zone is. Um, I use it for, I have the due diligence team make pictures for properties that I sell in Florida that I have added to the, um, Pictures I used to advertise. Oh, this is cool. Well, see how it's not, a, I don't know why it's not as sharp as some of the others, but it still lets me know if it's in the flood zone or not. That, there are a lot of different uh, GIS sites that are coming out. They're like all the rage now. Yeah. Huh. It's helpful. Very cool. I love it. I love it. Great tip of the week. Um, I have another tip if you want to meet all of us in Scottsdale. Come to boot camp. Go to landgeek.com forward slash boot camp. And, um, you know, two and a half days of land investing immersion. And you know, Mimi, are you going to be there? It's my three-year anniversary. I wouldn't miss it. Yeah. So, it's you know. Number you, 10. It'll be number 10 for me. Number 10. You can meet Mimi and she can actually show you all these geeky things, which is pretty cool to do so um anyways learn more to go to langeek.com forward slash boot camp i thought this was a, a great podcast and um i want to thank all the listeners please support the podcast it really really helps it really makes a difference all you have to do is subscribe rate and review the podcast send us a screenshot of that review to support at the langeek.com we're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit uh, course. And um, yeah, Scott, are we good? We're great, Mark. Bearland? Fabulous. Eric? Good. Good. Mimi? Yes. 
great. Thanks. Tate? Yep. Good podcast. All right. So um, everybody be on the lookout for lots and uh, certainly schedule your call with the Zen master Mike Zeno or uh, the Nightcap Meister Scott Bossman to see how you can get it for free. TheLandGeek.com forward slash training. All right. Are we doing this? Let's go, Mark. One, two, two three. three. Let, Let that freedom, freedom ring. ring. Oh my! That God. was the best one ever. It was good. It's that always was really good. good. Ring. Ring. That was Bearland, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that joke's never gonna get old. It, it really, it really doesn't, does it? <laughs> All right. Well, well. Thanks, everyone. So, um, I assume that uh, Tate, you've already cycled today. I'm actually going to go this afternoon. It was, um, it's going to be 80 degrees out here in Vegas. So I'm going to go out, work on my tan, have a nice ride in the afternoon, get some lunch. Nice. Nice. Eric, what about you? I already had lunch. Um, just be working the rest of the afternoon, picking up the kids from school, maybe. Nice. Very nice. Mimi, what about you? Working out at working out at four fifteen, and then I'm taking a beekeeping class with a friend of mine. Nice, that's cool. Yeah, now you know. Now that I work from home, I can do some cool things like that where I couldn't have ever done that before. I can imagine just being your life insurance agent, going through <laughs> these questions. My neighbors are gonna love me. Be, like, I just got a. I just got an advertisement. Um, you can order bees now through Tractor Supply Company. Yeah. And they'll deliver them right to your doorstep. Are, are you doing it because you're interested in bees or interested in the honey? Yes. Yeah, okay. yes. It's a way to give back too, right? Because they're... Because they're dying. You got to protect the honeybees. This is a big deal. It, it is. is. And I love them. them. We all die. That's still a thing now? The, the honeybees are still dying? Yes. Oh, yeah. They become endangered. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. God, are you flying today on the boat? No, it's uh, it's kind of rainy, cold, miserable here today. So uh, basically, I'm uh, playing with some new technology today, this okay. afternoon. I got to work out and then uh, see this little white box right there, right there. Oh, that thing is a dream box come true, man. What is it? You know, you know how like there's lots like looking over Tate's shoulder. This is called toe toys of envy for me yes yes so this this little white box right here what it does is it creates its own wi-fi network and then i can take um i can take my phone for example and i can sh connect my phone to that white device over there and that white device will take the video signal from my phone or my camera that's up there or the new camera that's right there. It will take the signal and it will overlay the track and I can do either streaming, Facebook or YouTube streaming live, or it will record all of the video segments. I can produce it right there from an iPad, drag, drop, do, boop, boop, play with it create it beautifully, or it will take all of the video tracks, record them into one file, and I can go in, I can edit and slice. So think about boot camp, man. Like literally we could set up, we're not gonna do this, but we could, we could set up cameras throughout like the VIP room and record all of the sessions and then go back and slice them. And with the transitions and it will be beautiful. Did, I, did anybody catch that? that by the way, while he's telling that story that he mentioned iPad, Eric did. I sure did. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Unfortunately, they haven't caught to the surface yet. They're, they're coming though. I know they are. <laughs> I've already complained. They will do it. PC sales are continue to rise. People are leaving Apple. And luckily, I had an iPad, so I didn't have to go buy one because otherwise I'd be like, that system's out. All right, great. Well, thanks, everybody. I'm going to go... Uh, I'm gonna eat a salad. I'm gonna keep it light. Go eat a salad. I don't know.
I'm um, sure there's a Panera joke in there somewhere. I just Panera has salads, Mark. That's true. That's true. Enjoy. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.